Today I'm going to show you how to make sourdough pita breads. It's as easy as pie. Well, probably a lot easier than pie. Hi, I'm Sune and I'm a food geek. Today I'm going to show you how to make homemade pita breads with sourdough starter. It's surprisingly easy. Easy to mix, easy to ferment, easy to shape and easy to bake. Gotta love that. Pita brats have a long history and they have their roots in the Stone Age in the Middle East over 14,000 years ago. Now, the, the Natufian people made kind of a flatbread from wild grains. Later, about 10,000 years ago, they were made with ancient wheat strands and barley, which were among the first domesticated crops. By 4,000 years ago, they were a staple in the region and they were cooked in something akin to today's tandoor ovens. There's no proof that these breads were anything like the pitas we eat today, and that's what I'm going to show you how to make. Today's video was brought to you by my Patreons. All of these wonderful people help me by donating a bit of money every month. On the first tier, you get access to Patreon-only content. On the second tier, you can get the video of the week one day before everyone else. You also get the ability to vote on ideas for new videos. On the third tier, you get a dried copy of my starter, plus priority help for your sourdough related problems. Thank you to everyone who supports me. It makes it possible for me to have the free time to make these videos. So these pitas are mainly made from bread flour. I also add a bit of whole grain wheat flour, but you can substitute that with your favorite whole grain flour. A bit of olive oil and sugar is added to help have a more moist bread. And the salt helps accentuate the taste of the grains. The inoculation of the starter is pretty huge at around 58%. The, this helps give a bread that has a wonderful fermented taste and a pretty explosive oven spring when you put the bread in the oven, which is needed to create the pocket inside the pita. Those were the words. This is the recipe. The written recipe, the ingredients, and the amounts are linked in the description and the card above. To a bowl, add 308 grams of bread flour, 77 grams of whole grain wheat flour, 15 grams of sugar, 10 grams of salt. Mix it with your fingers to distribute everything evenly. Then add 25 grams of olive oil, 225 grams of sourdough starter, this shouldn't be discard, 211 grams of water, mix until all the flour has been hydrated. Then flour your counter and knead the dough until it's smooth. Add extra flour as needed so that you have a tacky but not sticky dough. Put the dough back in the bowl and cover it. Let it ferment around six hours at room temperature until the dough has doubled in size. After it's doubled, put it in the fridge until you need it. It can easily stay in the fridge for up to one week. Once you want to bake, heat your oven to 260 degrees Celsius, 500 degrees Fahrenheit with a baking steel inside. 
If you don't have a baking steel, use an inverted baking sheet. Divide the dough into eight equally sized pieces. Shape each piece of dough into a ball. Tighten the surface by pushing the dough up into the center of the ball, then turning the dough about an eighth, going for as many iterations as it takes. Place all the balls under a dish towel. Let them rest for 20 minutes. After the 20 minutes are up, roll out each ball into a very flat round piece of dough. Make it as thin as you can without tearing the dough. Place each disc under a dish towel so that they don't dry out. After about 20 minutes, you should be ready to bake. If you're very nimble, you may be able to bake more than one pita at a time, but since they bake so quickly, I suggest that you bake them separately if it's your first time. Open the oven and add a pita to the baking steel and close the oven. Bake for about one and a half minutes. In the last 30 seconds, the pita should puff up like crazy. If it doesn't puff up, extend this time until it does. Then open the oven and flip over the pita using a spatula. Bake for about one minute more. Put the pitas on a wire rack until you finish baking. They can be used immediately, cooled down, stored in a plastic bag and reheated later, or frozen for up to three months. Now it's time to put something in these pita breads. First, we're going to make a Middle Eastern inspired pita bread. Mm -hmm. 
Add three fried crushed falafels to the bottom of the pocket. Then add thinly sliced halved cucumbers and some thinly sliced red onions and some half cherry tomatoes. Then drizzle on some tahini. Top with some finely chopped mint leaves. Oh, that's good. Then it's time for some Greek inspired pita bread. Start with some thinly sliced halved cucumbers, some halved cherry tomatoes, and some thinly sliced red onions. Then add some Kalamata olives, remember to remove the pits beforehand, and then some delicious feta cheese. Top with some finely chopped fresh oregano. Then drizzle over some vinaigrette made with olive oil, white wine vinegar, and a bit of mustard. Then it's time for an Italian-inspired pizza. Spread some passata over the pita bread. Top with some slices of fresh mozzarella. And a couple of leaves of fresh basil. Put into the oven heated to 220 degrees Celsius, 425 degrees Fahrenheit for about eight minutes or until the pizza is crisp. This may not be real pizza, but damn. Then the last pita I'll show you today is inspired by a Danish hot dog. First add sliced boiled red hot dog. Then add ketchup, strong mustard, sweet mustard, bemulele, diced onion, roasted onions, and top with some pickled cucumber. These are super easy to make. Make a liquid from one cup vinegar and one cup granulated sugar. Mix until the sugar dissolves. Then add thinly sliced cucumber and leave to infuse for at least an hour, preferably 24. <laughs> Yummy. So how about those red hot dogs? I think they used to dye them red to hide certain issues with the meat used, but these days it's purely cosmetic. Pita brats are great and very versatile. They can be used for a side for almost any dish and the pocket makes it possible to fill it with anything your heart desires. The Sado version of these brats has so much more taste than you're used to, so if you haven't tried making them before, give it a go now. Of course, the Greek and Middle Eastern fillings would be classic pita, but that can be rehashed and used for anything. It's a good thing when we mix up our cultures and foods, don't you think? I hope you learned something today. See you next time.